um, episode eight. We got JM Punk three two one. Thank you for coming on to uh, the greatest wrestling art platform there is right now. Um, in the wrong pen, and we have you here with a lot of a variety of professional wrestlers. Yeah, of like a wide variety. And I went on your page. I was like, how is he? This guy is with Scarlett. He's with uh, Varsity Blondes. Who else is this? Daniel Bryan. <laughs> I mean, the list goes on. Like, this is John Cena. <laughs> yeah. It's like, <laughs> it's like, do you it's, do you work for the, the, the organization? That's what it would almost seem like. You have to work for the WWE to be this consistent. No, it's just, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, it's just more being consistent of like, you know, where, where people are doing appearances, you know, but it's also a matter of if you can make it or not, because, you know, you know, all, all that, you know, is, is not uh, is not cheap. But uh, yeah, it's mostly just that just being consistent of, uh, you know, going to going to conventions, uh, seeing who's there. Um, and then from there, you know, you decide if you want to go or not. And then when, once you decide you want to go, then, you know, you definitely have to be financially prepared for that. You know what I like about you, and um, this is uh, this is what I like. Everybody you're standing next to, it's like they're taking a picture with you. It's oh. not like, <laughs> it, it looks like you're the wrestler in every picture. Like it looks like everybody else is like a fan of you, especially Daniel Bryan. Like it's like Daniel Bryan's like, yo, can I sit next to you so we can get this photo? <laughs> yeah. That's nice. So, how do you feel about uh, Daniel Bryan at AEW? Are we looking at the photo? How do you feel uh, about he's him? been, ah, uh, he's been great. Like, uh, you know, I always knew the potential he had from um, from his Ring of Honor days. Mm -hmm. You know, um, in WWE, I felt like he got to he got to show it, but not as much. And now in AEW, he he's gotten to show that. But not only that, but then, you know, he's constantly on TV, like he's wrestling. He's not there being part time, you know, and that's that's actually a great thing to see because, you know, this is something that he's been wanting to do. You know, he loves wrestling. And now, you know, you could see now he's been enjoying it because now it, it, even if you see his social media, he's promoting matches more. He's promoting AEW more than he did WWE. Yeah, I like uh Dan Brown has a leadership, a leadership role with AEW. You know, tenured. A lot of a lot of wrestlers in the industry say that Dan Bryan is one of the greatest wrestlers who've ever lived. Yeah, if not the great, you know what I mean. Some say he is. Yeah. So, shout to Daniel Bryan in in this. But uh, yeah, man, amazing work. So, what type of what type of work? do you mostly do like primarily is it sketch i see a variety of things coming from you uh mostly portrait work uh usually I, I just started focusing on that with maybe like the last seven or eight years I, i've been focused on more portrait work just because you know the challenges that it comes with um i love the fact that um that you know, when it comes to drawing, people who is always a challenge. It's never easy. You know, I always want to get that expression. You know, like whatever I'm, I'm working on. You know, I want it, I want it to be as much as it is as possible. Um, but yeah, it's, most, it's, most, it's been mostly portrait work that I've been, that I've been, I've been focused on. And usually, that's what I do for my, um, when I do like artist appearances at nice. conventions and stuff like that. Uh, that's what I mostly do, and you know it, it's worked out for me very well. What's your favorite uh, portrait work that you have? Oh, my favorite one. Yeah. Uh, do, you have a, do you have a particular one that's your favorite? Uh, it's hmm, it's kind of hard to say because um, there's so many that I love doing. Uh, that's a good that's a good question because I'm like hmm. Yeah. There's so yeah. yeah the, the, there's so many that is like hard for me to say. Uh, I would say my best work. It's uh, there was a painting that I did like ages ago, maybe about like eleven or twelve years ago, 
It was a painting of uh, the tattoo artist Kat Von D. Nice. That was probably my best. Yeah, that was that was probably my best one. Mm, I see with John Cena here. Uh, this was this is recent, October 9th, John Cena. You got the sketch, sketch pad out. Yeah. Yeah. So uh John Cena, I'm looking at his t-shirt. This is his NFT he's promoting with you. Um on his yeah. uh, you know. Have you heard much of the John Cena NFT? Uh yeah, that was the that was the one that they released on um I think on SummerSlam they released it and um he said himself, unfortunately it didn't do well because uh WWE decided to charge about a thousand dollars for it each. It was like a limited release. It was like about five hundred. On this hat, this shirt, two sets of wristbands, uh, a towel, a, an autographed picture, a, a autographed canvas picture painted by the artist that does a lot of familiar artwork, and an NFT. And when they came up with the face value, like what it cost to buy that belt, what it cost to buy the kit, what it cost to buy the autograph, what it cost to buy the lithograph, they came up with like a five to six hundred dollar retail value, and then threw in the value of the NFT. So I talk a lot about failure. This idea failed. Mm -hmm. I saw uh, that. Me, I, I saw that speech. I saw that same speech. It's on my page. Yeah, he, he wasn't happy about it. He because uh, you know, he said he knew. Like he when they, when they told him, I guess he he was like, oh, I, uh, I think that's a little too much, and he. It ended up being right, unfortunately. But yeah, I, want to talk I was about hoping they were they would have released the shirt like by itself. Yeah, the shirt the shirt can't the shirt comes with the whole set. So you, the only way you get the shirt is with the entire set. So yeah, yeah, I wanted to talk to you about this in detail because um, looking at the Undertaker NFT, the Undertaker NFT actually sold out. This NFT didn't necessarily sell out, and I'm trying to figure out why. Is because of the superstar power? What is it that is uh, with John Cena's NFT? This is the analysis that we're looking at, and I'm not expecting you to notice. We just we just looking at it from the outside in. But what is John Cena's NFT not worth that the Undertaker is? Was it timing? Or what? I think it was. Uh... I think it's a little of everything. I think it was on timing. It was definitely timing. Um, part of it too is that you know John Cena hasn't been on TV. I think that's a big part of it. If you get, if you're gonna spend that much money on somebody, and the reason why it's different from Undertaker because you know Undertaker is a you know he's a legend, and um, people when it comes to Undertaker, people are gonna go out of their way to spend whatever is released with Undertaker. You, if you freaking release a twelve hundred thousand, a twelve a twelve hundred dollar belt of Undertaker is going to sell out because it's the Undertaker. There is a chill in the air that signifies the arrival of the one and only, the Phenom, the Undertaker. So, nice. I think that's a big part of it. Yeah. Hmm. Just something to look at. I mean, does, does it now say that in his NFT won't be valuable even in the future? Maybe in the future, uh, I think it's, it just depends on how they promote Cena. I believe you know, it's just hard. It, it's really hard to say. Um, yeah. So speculation. That's it, yeah. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. But um, yeah, man, it's nice to meet you. I definitely want to just talk to you about that. Um, do you have anything that you want to promote? Do you have any like NFT work that you're currently working on? You know what I mean? If not, if you don't want to disclose, you know, that's completely cool too. You know what I mean? I'm just asking if you have any work that you wanted to actually get across. Um, any work that I that I have. Um well recently I do have a I actually do have a comic cover being released by uh Legacy Comics. There's they're a new company that just started in um in Brooklyn, New York, and I did a variant cover for one of their series that they're doing, and that one's actually going to be is going to be released, I believe, in the first quarter of next year. So I'm looking well, uh, forward to that one. That's actually far, my first. I was going to say, as far as comic books are concerned, what uh, is it wrestling related, or is it another type of uh, cult? What, what culture is it coming from? Oh, it's Marvel. a different. It's a different genre. Yeah, it's a different kind of genre. Um, yeah. In regards to like the 
to like a wrestling comic book there is something in the works i can't give too much detail about it but there is something in the works with with that as well um you know when more details come come out with that and i'm a i'm more i'm able to speak about that more i can speak about it got you but uh the one that's yeah the one that's coming out next yeah that's a, that's a different that, that's a different genre all right nice nice yeah i like marvel Riley stuff too so you get yeah, dragon ball z you know what i mean all, i've seen all of this <laughs> it's nice so it's nice that you uh stand rooted in, in all of this so yeah just looking at all of it oh this is nice roman reigns how you feel about day one is coming up uh, I mean, it's, I don't know. It's, it, yeah, it, it is what it is. Uh, you know, so that was actually one of my favorite pieces I did this year too. Um, in regards to day one, I don't know. It's, it's a little, it's a little weird for me just because, you know, they decided to do a show New Year's Day. Uh, as far as how the show's going to go, I think the show's going to go well. WWE, they've done... They've done well on their pay-per-views, uh, their weekly shows, not so much, but their pay-per-views have been yeah. well. So, the real so shows. It would, yeah, so it wouldn't surprise me uh, <clears throat> if it ends up being, ends up being, you know, great. Mm-hmm. Um, but besides that, I mean, I'm gonna watch it regardless. But yeah, nice. We'll see. Not, the thing is with the uh, with the road shows is that they are attempting to make more money um, that they couldn't make during the COVID-related uh, time period. Hope everybody in your family's been good since COVID has uh, striking our land. But uh, they're trying to make their money back um, for missing out, you know, during that time period where they couldn't have people in the seats through COVID-19. Uh, so they're coming up with these, these shows, um, like even the one that's day one, um, so they can, they can do that. They kind of maybe even start new new things you yeah. know so they just found an opportunity in the internet and they just decided to move forward but uh so you got roman reigns or brock lesnar you already just one more one more time confirm with me one more time you got right roman reigns or black or brock lesnar uh i think reigns is winning i think uh i think i think that whole thing with paul Heyman. i think it's a ruse okay. i have a feeling it's gonna i have a feeling it's a ruse and i i, I think roman ends up retaining mm. All right. all right, damn, that's all I had. I just wanted to come on here and meet you. Yeah, I wanted to meet you. I want to talk to you about NFTs and your artwork. And just want to say congratulations on meeting all these uh, wonderful wrestlers. Oh, thank you. And that you're safe from COVID-19 again. So, yeah, I'm good over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have a good one. Have a nice right, day. You too. We're going to be in contact. Be safe. Uh, definitely. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. You're welcome.